point five, the last video of Part D, Power and Energy Formulas. After we learned power consumption, energy consumption in the previous video, so in this one, I want to give you some basic formulas used to calculate power and energy. Yeah. All right. First, so let's look at the power, because when we talk about power, there are two different types of power. The first one called a static power. From the name, you can see static. <clears throat> there is another one, dynamic. So static and a dynamic. Yeah. The static, you know, something. So when the CPU does not do any computing work, you know, nothing, idling, you know, even different from idling. Yeah. So lot, remember last time when I give you the figures showing the power consumption for the idle state, idle state, then the power consumption pretty significant, right? Quite a lot. Yeah. But this static power, not, not for idling case, not for idle state not for idle state when you turn off turn off the computer turn off turn off suppose there is no power consumption but actually still there is small amount of power assumption even you shut down your computer still there is a small amount of power consumption. That is the static power. So in this page or in this uh, topic, we talk about that kind of power consumption, static power consumption. Static power essentially consists of the power used when the transistor is not in the process of switching. I mentioned this switch operation before, right? The transistor, two basic operations. The most important one is the switching one. The most important one is the switching one. Yeah. You change state between one and zero. You switch between zero and one, two different states. One, zero, zero, one. When you make the change, do switching, you need to consume energy, power. No. But here we talk about static power transistor not in the process of switching. Because in the process of switching, you're supposed to do computation work. Computation. But here, no computation work. You know, shut down the machine. No switching operations. But you still consume small amount of power energy. Yeah. All right. So although dynamic power is traditionally thought of as the primary source, right? Yeah, primary source. You do computing, processing. You need to do the meaningful work. The primary source of power dissipation in CMOS. Yeah. I mentioned the CMOS before, right? Yeah. Here we do not need to know the detail. Yeah. We just know it is a dominant IC fi uh, fabrication process. That's enough. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So the primary source, dynamic power. But the static power is becoming an important issue because leakage current. So here there is a concept called a leakage current. Leaking, yeah. The current is leaking. Still, there is some, you know, pretty small amount of current going through the transistors consume power energy. Yeah. All right. So flows even when up, 
transistor is off. Yeah. So that part consumes power energy. So sometimes we need to factor in that part, static power part. Yeah. So here the formula is given in this way. Power static. Static power is proportional. So this special symbol means proportional. Okay, yeah. Current, static current. Yeah. There is certain amount, so that can be you know measured using some special tool device. Yeah. Then multiply the voltage. Voltage. Yeah. So you know certain voltage apply on that transistor. Yeah. All right. Here, the reason we use this proportional symbol for two reasons. First reason, because proportional means we multiply. In this formula, we need to multiply a constant. All right, but the constant, usually we, we may not know its value, the value of the constant. We may not know it. Yeah. It's hard to know. Sometimes it, it is very hard to know. Yeah. Another reason, it may not be important to know, right? So there are a lot of reasons why we do not mention that kind of hidden constant. Hidden constant. The reason, you know, several possibilities. It may not be that important. That's one. Hard to know it. It, it is hard to know it. Okay? Yeah. But we can, you know, estimate without knowing that constant. We can do calculation even without knowing that constant. Yeah. All right. So this is the static power, the formula. Next, dynamic power. So we want to know the relationship between dynamic power and the voltage. Okay. Yeah. The formula here. Yeah. All right. First, we need to look at the meaning of that dynamic power. Yeah. From the steady power explanation, you are, can already guess a little bit what is the dynamic power. Yeah. Here, let me describe it in this way. The power required per transistor is just a product. Yeah. So here talking about you know the formula, right? The product, yeah, of energy of a transistor yeah. energy of a transistor when you do switching yeah here in the parenthesis from zero to one or one to zero actually you are doing the switching operations in a transistor but when you do that you need power you need to use energy yeah so the energy of the trend Transition, what, well, yeah, here the transition. Transition, you know, the same as the switch. Yeah. Transition, the switch in a transistor, in a transistor, okay. Switching between zero and one, the state change, yeah. The energy, yeah, here we're talking about energy, yeah. Multiply by the frequency of transition. Yeah. So you have a Transition frequency. So what's the transition of frequency? Each second, how many transitions, how many switches do you do in one second? That's the frequency. So that frequency number. Yeah. All right. So the formula is given in this way. Dynamic power. Yeah. Is proportional to, yeah, proportional another time. Yeah one half of the capacitive load some physics property yeah, capacitive load yeah. here i do not want to get involved in the meaning of that just some constant number some constant number we do not need to know it yeah. but related to the transistor property yeah. multiply the voltage square here you can see the voltage square yeah. Static, the voltage, no square. Static here, the voltage, there is no square. 
but the dynamic, there is a voltage square factor. Okay, then multiply the frequency number. Yeah, so that's the formula, dynamic power formula. Yeah, all right. So impact of clock rate to power and energy. Clock rate, yeah, I mentioned that clock rate before. Okay, what's the clock rate in each second? One second, okay, one S. Okay? The number of CPU clock cycles. Clock cycles, CPU. Inside CPU, there is a special clock. Yeah. Clock different from, much different from our regular clock. Very special, yeah. you know. Ticking very, very fast. Ticking very, very fast. So each tick corresponds to one cycle, clock cycle. Yeah. So in each second, how many clock cycles? Usually in gigahertz. When you buy a computer, you notice the number 2.5 gigahertz, right? Yeah, that's the clock rate number. So that means in each second, there are 2.5 gig, you know gig, right? You know gig, 10 to the ninth power, 2.5 gig number of clock cycles in just the one second so that fast so that's the clock rate all right the impact of the clock rate to power and the energy yeah when clock rate is larger or smaller the power consumption and energy consumption right so we talk about two things power consumption and energy consumption slightly different yeah all right for a fixed task, so when you do a fixed computing task, slowing clock rate reduces power. Yeah, slowing clock rate, you can see smaller, the frequency is smaller, right? Yeah, you know, ticking, yeah, corresponds, you know, switching corresponds to that ticking, right? Yeah, slowing clock rate, yeah, reduce the power, yeah? Reduce the power, yeah. consume less power, yeah. but not energy. Because when you consume less power, it takes longer to complete the same amount of work, same amount of computing work. So you need a longer time. After you multiply the time, then the power, the total energy the same. You have to consume the same amount of energy to complete the same computing task. Yeah. Here, that's the meaning. Yeah. So you're doing slowly, but it takes longer to complete it. So that, that's the meaning. Yeah. All right, so next. Relationship between dynamic energy and a voltage. This, this time we look at dynamic energy, not the power. Slightly different energy. Energy consumption during a period of time, yeah, here, yeah. So the energy required per transistor is proportional to the product of the capacitive load driven by the transistor and the square of the voltage. So this is the formula. You can see the frequency is gone the frequency is gone yep. because frequency related to the time, right? Per second, each second. So related to per second, yeah. So dynamic energy, yeah, you know, still proportional to the voltage square. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so equation, Pulse, yeah, the logic transition, yeah. So we talk about that, the transition, logic transition between zero, one, one, zero. Yeah, that's the dynamic meaning. Yeah, 
capacitive load here I put a explanation a little bit so for us uh, we do not need to know that kind of detail yeah. so we just take it as certain constant we do not even need to use that particular number in our computation yeah. all right so we complete uh, this topic and our part D of module one so next time we will start module two but in module two I like to give you a computation example regarding this dynamic power dynamic energy yeah. how to apply the formulas we learn to solve some special question yeah all right so let's stop here yeah